teaching online classes. And this worked out well for me because since we already had a working relationship, he had me come visit all of his senior English classes to go over all of the digital library resources we have. And um, if a kid didn't have a card, I showed them how they could apply for an e-card. So, um, I, so I've actually gotten to do some stuff with the schools that I hadn't been able to do before through our media specialist being a, an online classroom teacher this year. Cause that just led to more classroom visits. Like he did one and then other English teachers were like, oh, well, we're doing this assignment. Can you do a classroom visit? So, yeah. Um, just so you guys know, we are recording now. Caitlin's doing it on her end. So just so everybody's aware, we are being recorded now. I was gonna say, I'm, I work at a public library and um, we were closed for about two months. And so we were still able to do some virtual programming through taping videos on how to demonstrate stuff, uh, things like that. But yeah, it was very frustrating to not be, I would like volunteer to drive an hour just to go be in the building for 10 minutes, just because I missed it. And um, now that we're back open, we're not having a ton of teens, but at least I have some. And I'm doing mentoring with the local high school virtually. So at least that's giving me some a foothold. Um, I'll be very happy when we get back to normal pre-COVID. I miss it. Yeah. I would love to hear who's like who has like had a really successful take and make at their library for, for teens and <laughs> like yay and talk about it. Um, I've had a couple Absolutely. of really successful ones too, but I would love to hear from everyone, like what has been really, they found really successful for their team. So our branch, I'm in the Cincinnati library. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> um, it's teeny tiny. I work in Deer Park and it's, it's like less than 5,000 square feet, um, which is mostly an issue because we always had really ambient teen population. Like we got We'd have like some 25 odd teens and tweens in the library after school, which was always interesting. Um, now we're limited. I'm sorry. I don't know if you could hear my cat whining. Um, now we're <laughs> limited to five people in the branch. So that's not, our teens do come by sometimes to like visit, um, but like most of that space is taken up by shelves and stuff. So it's really hard to keep like we only have three public computers right now because that's how much we have space for. Um, but we have a lot of, it's like a lower middle class. And so there's a lot of, um, we had a lot of like latchkey kids and a lot of families who um, like relied on our programming for sort of stuff for their kids to do. Um, but my fellow youth librarian, the children's librarian and I um, have been doing, God, like absolute loads of take and makes. Um, so this year we've actually been keeping track um, on a spreadsheet. And so far from the beginning of January until now, based on just like trying to keep up with demand. We've yeah. made about upwards of 700 take and makes. What are you including in your take and makes, Kate? Um, it depends. So I'm sorry, there's a lot of noise in my house right now because we're trying to move. <laughs> um, so it kind of depends. We try to do them for different ages. So we try to have at least three different ones out at any given time. And we're also trying to do um, a series where we include as many like take and makes for different cultural holidays as possible um, so that we can teach kids about other holidays. And since we actually have someone Jewish working there now, it's me. Um, I actually know what to put in them. Would you, be willing, um, would you be willing to like send us um, 
send one of us on the committee um, a, a list of the take and makes that you do because it sounds like it's really interesting that especially if you're using different yeah. and then we can share that on the team think tank .net, um, website. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, let's see what's out. <laughs> We've also been trying to use up a lot of our craft supplies because we're moving to a larger location. It's about five times the size and we do not feel like moving all of that stuff. We try to give them as much of the like craft as possible. We try not to have them need too much stuff. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading the chat and I actually ordered these like tiny lip gloss tubes on Amazon. Um, they were like $5 for 35 or something like that. And um, when I did like a scratch off art and I actually gave them everything they needed for scratch off art, um, including the paint. <laughs> so we try to give them as much as possible because again, some like some of the kids have usually they'll have scissors although we have given them scissors before um usually they'll have scissors but we do like i've given them little dried like uh, watercolors and stuff like that so um we try to give them as much as possible because they don't all have all of that at home our um children's librarians just applied for a grant to buy scissors, crayons, glue, glue sticks, stuff like that, to provide specific, um, I'm in a suburb of Akron. Mm -hmm. And so they are, they are buying the things that we think of as basics that all kids will have at home to take to um, the AMHA housing, Akron Metropolitan Housing Authority locations that we have in town. That's a good idea. That would be nice because we also have this complicated thing where um, Cincinnati is really weird. I've learned since moving to Ohio from California, um, Cincinnati is weird and it's like very neighborhood based, <laughs> like more than I've ever seen before. Um, and it means that we'll get kids from Deer Park, but also there's not a library in a couple of the surrounding areas and we're this sort of like lower middle class island in the middle of super rich neighborhoods. <laughs> um, so it would be nice to be able to get some of that to some of our kids in particular, I think. But yeah, I wanna say we've done upwards of 700 take and makes at this point. I was gonna say, um, is it okay for me to jump in? Okay, um, yeah, I'm the teen specialist for the teen librarian. So our children's librarian has been doing take and make kits. And then we have some system wide that come out quarterly. Um, like Kate said, I've been trying to use up whatever supplies I had um, and then stretch the budget as much as I can. So some paper crafts, things like that. So I'm trying to do a craft and then a STEM or steam based I take and make twice a month for the tween and teen set, anywhere from 10 to 20, depending on what I can get from the budget. And they've all gone. Um, we probably, one of the best ones we did, I had a, bu a bunch of mini little canvases left over from when I first started. So I got the paint, the paint pot. We did, we called them mini masterpieces. One of my coworkers is an art, uh, she, she really knows her art. So we put together a little booklet on different art types and examples. They got a paintbrush. They got the basic colors of paint, red, yellow, red, yellow, blue, white, uh, and then a, a guide to mixing your colors and, you know, in little paint pots and then acrylic paint and let them have at it. So uh, that went like, it was gone in like a, two days. Um, so we've, we've been doing really good. Like I said, I'm trying to do art craft for both male or female and then you know just kind of neutral and then a steam based or stem based uh for uh this next one we're doing it's for pi day pom-pom coasters and then as additional resources i have a list of like 
uh, Pi, what Pi is using Pi and math, as well as some of our uh, digital resources to try to tie it into the art aspect. So, um, I, you know, and I, I have it planned out through the end of the year, at least idea wise. So I, I know where to spend my budget, uh, although it can always be revised. So that's how I try to do it. Um, and they, they've been going. Is it cool if I jump in? Absolutely. So um, we have been limiting like our stuff with um, how much programming we do. Our children's librarian does tons and tons and tons of uh, take and makes. And what I have been doing with the teens, because I usually am the one that does all teen stuff. Um, I do at least two to three kits a month. And I also do videos along with them so that the kids can log in Facebook and watch me do the craft and kind of like be like, hey guys, like, you know, interact with our videos because I have not seen any teens in like months. You know, it's been really sad lately here um, because we used to have such a huge influx of teens coming in. But ever since COVID, I think parents have just kind of not been letting them come in. So what I do is, I usually put everything that needs to go in there. Then just like, if it's paints and stuff like that, I notice people are saying like one ounce cups and stuff like that. Um, that's what I do with all of the stuff. And then, like I said, I do the videos and they go off really, really well. Um, some of the more popular stuff, um, I love crocheting. So I've been teaching the kids how to crochet like um, scrunchies and, um, I had some money left over last year, so I ended up, I don't, I don't know if you guys saw the huge trend with the um, chunky blankets. I got them a starter kit and they absolutely loved it. One of the moms actually came in and showed me one of the blankets that the girl made. It was so awesome. So um, I don't know if you guys, do you guys do videos for yours as well? Is there like any recommendations you guys may have for that? Do videos for mine for a lot of mine. Um, like for example, I can find it. Just a second. Oh, we did uh, baby Yoda's. Oh, Rogu's. So this is a sewing one, and um, so I taught them like a couple of different stitches. This one was really really popular, by the way. I had adults asking for this one. <laughs> um, so we provided a needle and the string and everything every, and all the felt and the and the pattern and then I made a video on YouTube on how to sew so I showed them how to do a blanket stitch and an over stitch because um, sometimes it's really hard just to have a piece of paper that shows it to you and instead having a video along with it is helpful so we do both we do a, a paper that tells you how and a video for those that might not have access to um, internet. Um, and this one was, yeah, this one was super duper popular. Um, so all of our sewing ones have been. <laughs> but yeah, we do videos. Like I did a polymer clay one too, that went over pretty well. And we did videos on that as well. I've done a couple team program videos. Um, I don't know how many people that watched it were teens versus anyone else we use Facebook live for our videos our um our adult librarians do videos all the time for crafting programs um the only one I did for teens that was a craft I did mask lanyards um and then I did a will it waffle but that wasn't a take it make take and make that was just um uh, another librarian and I am making no not will it waffle we did will it iron and we did some recipes with clothes irons and some with waffle makers. Um, but I have felt very overwhelmed. So since, and I, I was just, I was just starting to build up a new like a group of teens when the pandemic started. So that was very frustrating. So I don't necessarily know the teens that are taking the stuff, but it's going. So that makes me happy. Um, I might do videos for the, our summer projects, but um, I haven't been doing a ton of videos for teen programming. 
Um, I wanted to comment on something Amanda said. Um, you had said uh, for like the Yoda adults were asking about them. I feel like when I set programs or kits out for teens, the adults are taking them. So does that happen with you guys? Like, how do you try and make sure that, because we want them to be, you know, for the teens, we do a ton of stuff for the kids, but how do you, I mean, do you like discourage the adults from taking them or do you just make extra? I wanted to ask about that. I we would have registration. Oh, that's our, great. So we do registration pre time, pre, uh, we open registration two weeks ahead of time. Okay. So you can register two weeks ahead and then we have like a set week that you pick up. Um, so that's how we've been doing ours. And then that way too, I can budget out how much I'm spending for each take and make craft. Cause then I go, all right, I'm making 25 of these or there's only 20 of these. Um, and then we have them so that they can come pick up either. We're open now for the public, um, mm -hmm. but uh, we do still do curbside. So they can either come into the building and pick it up or they can come curbside and get it that way too. Yeah, I was just setting them out in the teen area and they were gone by, you know, not by the teens, you know, so maybe registration is the way to go. It could be parents picking them up for their teens. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's how we've been doing it. With okay, that. cool. Ours are in an area that patrons can see but can't get to. We have one of those like ribbony things to, the, to block off our basement stairs. So there's a shelf that people can see what's out and we have, a, we have the shelves divided by age group. And also our customer service staff, um, when they're checking people out, they might like let them, if they haven't asked about a kit and they'll say, oh, do you have a teen? Like my, our CERC staff has really helped. They'll be like, hey, like well, the last week of February, I'm like, I see there are still some February kits. Like, let's make our goal to be get rid of these by Saturday so I can put my March kits out on Monday. And so like the, the one woman I work with is great. She's just like, anybody who comes up, do you have a child in grade eight through 12? Like here is what we have for them this month. So there, our whole library, I feel like we've really been better than ever about working together through all of this nonsense. We really have each other's backs. I finally was able to talk our adult person into, um, she started doing crafts for the adults so that the adults didn't want, the, wouldn't always go after the teen crafts. And that's been helping offset some of that too. Our adult ones tend to go super fast because we advertise a date that the adult librarians are gonna do their Facebook live video and the kits go out one week before. Um, so I know Cirque, one of the girls at Cirque who used to be one of my teens um, said, I gave an adult one of the teen kits because she looked so sad that there wasn't anything for her. Is that okay? I'm like, it's fine. It's a pandemic. I always say, um, I don't want to discourage anybody from not being able to participate because our adult person she can't tend to be a little to twirl with her stuff and so she doesn't want like a, a kid to take or whatever I'm like but she, and we all we do you pick up a kit and then we get together for an event in a zoom and they can watch us do them live so we can count them as live programming so she's having kids come to her programs and she's trying to discourage that I'm like why would you discourage anybody from coming to a live program <laughs> at this point especially in a zoom format so I don't know we want numbers, right? And plus if they're if they're older kid, like if they're teens and once they're out of high school, if they're still in the community, they're gonna recognize her and maybe feel more comfortable coming to adult program. We need to have that overlap where the ages start to blend so that kids feel comfortable transitioning. Absolutely. Oh. I've basically just been going through my old um, teen think tank and uh, take five notes and be like, oh, this looks like it would be fun to stick in a bag and pass out. But um, when I was, so when I was going through things the other day, I found a list my practicum student a few years ago had made for like, these are bookstagram uh, supplies. Cause she was really into bookstagram. Um, 
and we were going to go shopping for them, but we never did. And so I was like, oh, I should just write I was in a requisition writing mode that day. And I was like, oh, there's a lot of this stuff is just at the Dollar Tree. So my May take and make is going to be like an, a bookstagram kit and then encourage the kids to tag us in photos when they use the supplies so we can see how they use them. So we're going to go to Dollar Tree and get some poster board, some fairy lights, any sort of scarves or scraps of fabric they might have, um, stuff like that. And my PR person's going to, one of the things that the um, person that made initially made the list was like, if you have any swag for the book or like thematic things that go along with it, like pins. Well, since we have a button maker, I'm going to have my PR person like design a button that we'll put in the kit too. So like, I don't know what it will say yet, but I'm very excited about this May kit that I'm going to do. What did you call that, Sarah? Was that? Is oh, that bookstagram. When like when people who are like book bloggers or just obsessed with books, like their, their Instagram feed will be mostly books. And sometimes they've gotten review copies and they just make it all pretty with backgrounds and all kinds of accessories. Um, you can make your own backgrounds with poster board or um, really inexpensive on Amazon. I've seen Instagram backgrounds that are double-sided. So it looks like a very nice like marble countertop or a butcher block wood table, but it's really this placemat that you can either lay your item on that you're photographing or um, prop it up against a wall so it's a background. Gotcha. But for the kits, we're, um, I'm just gonna buy some poster board and then cut it probably into fourths or eighths. I don't know. I'll measure it with a book. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, um, I put my kits out catty corner to the main desk and I do make sure the sign that says uh for you know ages whatever um like 10 to 18 usually and I only put so many out per day and then once they're gone for the day I bring the basket back until the next day to try to make it like I said that that one it was like gone in a single day and I was like hmm I was hoping for at least a couple of days so it's it's mostly worked out. Like I would say like there the, the other day we're doing um, a sewing project. So it's uh, a coin felt pouch instead of a purse. I thought pouch would be more gender neutral. And this one lady says, oh, can I want I said, sure. I said, um, she goes, yeah, I'm gonna do it for my, I'm getting it for my six-year-old. I said, oh, just to let you know there's needle and thread in there. She goes, oh, I'm gonna do it with her. I said, I just wanted you to know because that's kind of the concern I have is uh, that's why I try to clearly label the age. Um, if someone's going to take it, they're going to take it. I'm not going to say no. We have a limit on how many people can come in the building at a time and for how long. And our community is a, a wide range of socioeconomic. And we're kind of smack bang in the middle of it. Um, so I don't want to discourage someone from taking it. But it seems like most of the stuff is either being taken by the families with the tweens and, the, and some of the teens coming in or parents going, oh, can I take this for my kid? I'd rather I, someone enjoy it, although I'd obviously like it to be for the actual age group. Um, um, they need things to do too, so I'm not going to tell them no, as long as I have it labeled and try to encourage that. I'm just happy there if someone's enjoying it. Did you just pierce the felt needle, or did you put it in a little Ziploc bag? Uh, actually, I've been getting everything from Amazon and they actually had felt cut into eight and a half by 11 um, sheets in different colors. So I could just tuck it right in there along with the instructions and the needle, needle and the thread. And I had pictures to go with the instructions to tell them how to fold it over. And I had examples of the two different stitches they needed as well as a link to a video um in case they they wanted to do that but it was perfect I didn't have to do any cutting and I used I included velcro dots that they could sew on so you know 10 15 minutes and they've got a little coin pouch because I'm not the world's greatest sewer we are getting ready to do um I'm calling April fool's grab bags 
we have a lot of stuff left over from all like different types of programs and you know all those bits and pieces you have left even some holiday stuff will be in there so they're they're not going and they're going to be in a brown paper bag so they're not going to know what they're going to get so it's just going to be a hodgepodge of everything because we um my director had me clean out my storage area and all the um, cupboards in my programming room and so and he told me I have to get rid of some things, you know, pare it down a little. So that's what we're doing to get rid of a lot of that stuff. So it's just like a random bag of craft things yep. and like make what you will with it. Yep. Oh, that's cool. That's a good idea. Are you going to maybe have them or suggestion like, hey, maybe post a quick video or something so we can see what you did? Oh yeah, we always ask them to tag us or something like that, you know. Not many people do. They really don't, but you know. So my we, kids group has been doing the same thing, but they've been asking people to send um, pictures via email to our kids at library.com or dot org. Yeah. Um, and uh, it started off slow, but it's actually gotten increased where we've gotten a lot more people sending stuff. Um, and it's great because then you're like, oh, look, somebody's actually doing it and enjoying it and because we can't see it here. So it's been it's been nice. It does make it nice. We're doing this month. We're getting our yeah, the month. The March kit will be a no sew pillow. I had a bunch of the, um, you know, polar fleece left from programs. And uh, so we're going to be passing those out for the teens this month. Last month I did mug cakes in a kit. Mm. So I I got mugs. I did 20 bags. I got 20 white mugs at Dollar Tree. I threw two recipes, a chocolate cake and a vanilla cake recipe in the bag. And then um, I got those very nice, um, the long, like the little Ziplocs, but that are long instead of wide and did all of the um, dry ingredients for enough for two recipes. And I even, because I was afraid that some kids might not have proper or know how to use proper measuring things or not have them at home. Um, you know, there was flour for enough flour for two, but I gave them two separate bags of flour. I gave them two separate baggies of sugar. Um, and those went well. If we do food, it has to be prepackaged. We cannot do anything, you know, that we touch or anything like that. And we usually do, um, like how many kits do you guys do? We do, I try to do at least 50 to 75 for the teens. And then we just, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, we don't, our director doesn't want us to do registration. And we have one week where we're like one certain day we start to put them out and we just put a few out at a time. And uh, you know, then when they're gone, they're gone. Do you guys have a set number of kits that you make? I try to do 20, we're, we're not huge. Um, so I think with the supplies that we got, my, my supervisor really helped me out in a pinch because I, I was not, in a mental space to come up with a St. Patrick's Day craft. And she went to Dollar Tree and whipped something together for me. And it, and um, I um, think I had enough for 17. And it was like, she, she did all the math. She's like, it's about 75 cents per craft. So it's like a little shamrock tree coming out of a little tiny clay pot. Ours depend on how like um, pricey the items get. Cause as you guys know, like our budgets are very limited. So um, if it's something like, you know, origami, I have tons and tons of paper. I'll do like a good 20 of them. If, if it's like something like really in depth, like with the crocheting, well, you know what? Some of the crocheting stuff actually can get cheap if you like do go on sales and stuff. But if it's more like, hands-on kind of really crafty things we do more like 10 to 15 or stuff like that because I know that most of the time like 
five like, of those kids are going to be taken by adults that want to do a teen craft so we actually also got so at my brand um i work with the high school well the middle high school a lot in the elementary yeah. school um because that's what teen librarians do is work with every age group um but I actually um ended up chatting with one of the transitions teachers um for the like it's like a moderate functioning special education classroom that she's in charge of and she actually contacted us because they used to sometimes you know, come by and help volunteer. Um, but now we actually got it set up where like, I'm, I'm always working on crafts. Like we keep, we keep the take and make stocked no matter what, because it's the only like good way we have to reach everyone aside from, I mean, they can only do so many you know, online story times. Um, but we, I actually get some stuff together and we give it to, um, get some stuff together and give it to the class and they actually make some of the bags because their teacher, like it's really good to have them do, um, you know, some sort of rote consistent stuff and they really enjoyed doing it. So we have this great partnership where the transition sped class like makes some of our, like puts together some of our bags of take and makes for us. And then we'll do a swap every week. So that's also very helpful in keeping up the demand sort of. So our videos stay up on our Facebook even after the craft is done. Um, and our adult librarians are really fun with their crafts too. So if any of you want to see our craft oh, videos yeah. and have a chance, they're have a chance. They're all on Facebook at Barbara and Public Library. And one of our children's librarians does a craft connection program that she used to do in person. It's for all it's ages for all and abilities. And so, and so since we're not doing live programming, the agencies have been contacting her and she's making like over a hundred kits now a month for the with different agencies to pick up and it is just awesome. So highly encourage if you have a chance to go look at her videos. I'm just reading the chat and I think the little mini pinatas sound adorable out of a toilet paper to roll, except, you know, we're not supposed to use toilet paper rolls anymore. You should use paper towel holders. <laughs> yeah, that, somebody else is asking, um, is anybody doing anything for National Library Week? I just said that we're not for National Library Week, but it, you could do this for National Library Week if you wanted to. We're doing book boxes. Um, so like teens can go register online. They'll fill out like a little um, survey, like what kind of book do you like? And we're using like mostly donations or um, even ARC that we get. And so uh, if like you say you like fantasy, then we'll put a fantasy book in. Um, and then inside the box, there's also like, I've got a box here, so I'll just open it really quick. Um, we have a little thing of gummy bears and a sticker. Like it's a sticker. Uh, we have a button maker, so we made tiny buttons that says book nerd on it. Uh, we have I got these off of Amazon. They came like a whole kit. They're like these fun pens. They all come in different styles. And then a little mini notebook and a bookmark that I made and just laminated. So they're really not too expensive. Um, 
they're a little more expensive than our normal ones are, but our normal, like a normal take and make box, like is probably roughly $2 a person. This is maybe more like three to four dollars to put if you break it down but um it was extremely popular like all of ours have been registered for within the first three days of registration um whereas before registrations opened as i said we open registration two weeks ahead of time and it'll like take the two weeks for them to trickle in to trickle so that in. one has been really um, where do you popular with it where do you get the boxes? Amazon and both? I got or? the boxes on Amazon. Uh, yeah. Can I'm I just start? starting. Sorry. Well, well, go ahead, that? Michelle. I was just wondering what size. Um, I will tell you that the boxes were the most boxes. expensive. And I don't think you have to do boxes. I think you could get paper bags and do the same. The boxes are do look cool. I am going to put, I'm going to do this because I put this is somebody saying. Um, so I made the little um I drew that oh that's drew nice the, the thing around it um and then just taped it to the box but this is like the box like but there the boxes are pricey I just ordered some stuff to do this I was going to use paper bags um they're about a quarter a piece on Amazon you can get a hundred eight by eleven um paper bags with handles for $24.95. But then I decided that like our readers are very quiet. Like they don't talk to like my teen, a lot of my teen readers, they go in, they get stuff, they leave. Um, but I'm going to start doing the recommendation thing, but with library books. So they'll actually be checked out to them. But I bought the like, I bought this, the cinch stack backpacks to put them in so they can keep everything so keep including everything. the backpack and just bring back the books and the backpacks were $35 on Amazon for 40 um, bags and I got temporary tattoos a stress ball and some um, earbuds that are pretty colors and I'll go get a snack I would love to encourage everybody in this room to email me anything that you have been doing for your take and makes, and we will, I will have Steve put everything take because there's a ton of things that we're all doing. And, you know, we need as many cool ideas as we can because this is where we're at right now. So, this is a perfect opportunity for us to be able to share that with everyone. Um, I will say that Pinterest has been my best friend, along with Google, along with Google. Uh, to do some internet searches. And I think I have links and ideas for probably 10, 15 pages. And I'll look back on old stuff too, but I, I do, what I've been doing is like I said, I've been trolling Pinterest Wait. and Google, like uh, easy tween crafts, easy, the, you know, however you want to phrase it. And then I make a big long list of whatever sounds interesting and then start narrowing it down by cost and, you know, so forth and so on. And that's how I've been doing it. Um, so. Anybody done an Among Us craft yet? Not yet. <laughs> Next month I'm doing one, so I will see. I we're doing just shrinky dinks and making shrinky dink keychains. Oh, that's and what we did. The, oh, perfect! I've seen people do um, uh, perler beads as well, um, but I know irons. Like not, I like I don't own an iron. Like how many teenagers will own an iron? <laughs> so um, the library owns an iron, but I don't own it. Uh, so we're doing shrinky dinks instead, and then I found a pattern online. I can send it. Um, to do like a little felted guy too. Uh, and there's a video online too that I'm gonna try it. I don't know if it's gonna be successful where you can make an Among Us character, a plush Among Us with these like super soft Chanel socks, but we'll see. I don't know. These are super cheap by the way. So if you wanna try it, they're, they're really, really cheap to buy. 
um, you can get them like a, a dollar. So <gasps> wait, Among Us Guy says hand warmers? I need to know more. I'm going to try something with the socks with donuts. You can make a donut sock. It's an old rolled up sock and felt and a little puffy pin or something. So, but yeah, I'd like yeah, to know about the strength with Among Us. Uh, I would like to know more about that too, because that sounds like fun. Hand warmers. I got to hear about the hand warmers. Megan, can you tell us? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's, they're just felt. Um, and I made the pattern from like the official artwork or whatever. Um, and it's, um, I can send it, but it was super easy. It's felt, um, you do a blanket stitch to keep the two pieces together. You stuff it with rice, um, pop it in the microwave, hand warmers. So um, I have tutorials on the our team library um, Instagram um, on our IGTV because I do them as lives unless they take a really long time and then I just upload them once I've edited it. Um, so I can share that if you guys want to take a look at it. Absolutely. Like I said, I want all, all of your ideas so we can put them up on the page. Plus, I'm probably going to use some of them myself. <laughs> Are any of you guys doing um, interactive movies with your teens? Um, I know we do an interactive movie kit with our teens every month. Um, in fact, this month is Princess Bride, and it has probably been our most successful one so far. Last month, over Harry Potter. And um, and we do actually, we do one with the kids and we do one with the teens. Um, and uh, let's see, we do something like we're doing different recipes um, where we give them one of the ingredients or all the ingredients to make things. Um, we're upcoming, we're gonna do, give them a jiffy cake mix and then tell them to figure out what to make with it. Not cake, you gotta come up with something else. So it's gonna make them think on their feet or do some research online and then they can come to one of our Zoom meetings and share what they've come up with. So that was just a couple of ideas I've done. I'm sorry, I need to know more about this parody 1980s pop culture painter guy program. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, please. So it's Bob Ross, but so we don't get sued by Bob Ross. <laughs> I never call it that. Never call it that. Um, I, in the before times, I would do it live and we would call it Happy Little Painters. Um, and so it was just Happy Little Painters to go. And I just do all of my kits in mailing envelopes, whether it's, you know, pick up or I was mailing things home, like my dinosaur plushie kit and things like that. Boba tea got mailed out, but now they're having to pick up because we were getting charged for parcels instead of mailing envelopes. And there was a whole big thing, but each kid got their whole little packet with the inspiration piece and some fun weird mazes and a hey you made your artwork kind of a thing and a you know, paintbrush temper paint in pots a mini canvas and then a paper plate that they can cut out to be their um paint palette and then in the packet there's a link to a video of me painting along with them with the inspiration and I'm dressed up like Bob Ross but I never ever ever mention the name Bob Ross I just have the wig and the beard and I will try and talk like him and it's <laughs> awkward and in person they love it I had 51 for this one so it wasn't as big as some of my other kits but it was it went over pretty well um it was a little bit more in intensive because you had to fill each paint pot with the temper paints and stuff but winds up being maybe a dollar fifty a kit I want to say I had about because we own the paints we own the paint pots I only bought the 
spent $30 on paintbrushes and mini canvases, so. Somebody asked what interactive movie kits are. Um, oh, Amanda did. So what an interactive movie kit is, you take, say, Princess, Princess Bride, and you make a script, and actually we got it off of, we found it somewhere. You take the script, and in the script, it has you do things throughout the movie. Sometimes it's an action, you might have you eat something, and or do different do different things throughout and then we provide you with the script along with the different things you might need to fulfill doing the script throughout the movie and we include a bag of microwave popcorn and we do that with all of our our, our kits um interactive movie kits and they have been our bread and butter some of our um, movie kits that we've done not for teen but one of the younger ones um, Hocus Pocus in October, we did 125 kits. So we're super excited that it's it's taken off so well. We now have put a limit on our movie kits. We will only do up to 100 of them now for family movies. And I think we're doing, I forget how many we're doing for team. I think they're doing 25 or 35. We do about 20 to 30, it just depends, Ms. Valerie. How do you show the movies? Do you do it over, um, like we have Canopy, so that's one way we can stream movies live. How do you guys stream your movies? So we used to have a movie, and actually we do not actually watch the movies together. Um, we just provide the kit. We sometimes will have DVDs that they can, adults can check out. We will give them a list of places where they could possibly stream the movie themselves, um, but we don't watch it together. Um, we used to have a license and I actually contacted our licensing company and they told us that it is illegal to be streaming a movie with a group of people, no, no matter what format we're trying to use. And, um, so, and, and they were trying really hard, all the different movie studios trying to get them to change that and they won't budge. So, um, somebody had said something about a Netflix party or something. And they said, I did some research on that and that actually isn't even owned by Netflix by a second part. So um, my library actually did, and I hope you can hear me okay. Um, here yes. at our library, we actually did the, uh, the movie kits as well. Um, and one thing that we did and one thing that we learned was that we can put like a little postcard size um, little flyer in the actual movie kit with a link to um, that movie on Hoopla um, to help promote Hoopla. Um, and that worked really well for us. But then we had a couple copies of the movie in the back. Um, I actually did Norm of the North um, in the winter time. And um, people seemed to absolutely love it. It was so popular right away. Um, and it was nice because we got to promote Hoopla usage. Um, but then we had the movies and things like that as well. Um, and one thing too is, so we couldn't post what movie, um, what movie that we would be watching, quote unquote, together, or whatever. Like we couldn't post what movie we were promoting um, at all. But we could if we had it just on a flyer in our branch, and we could on the little postcards that went um, in the in the kit saying. You know, we're watching Norm of the North and um, put like a little picture of the movie poster. And then we did a bag of microwave popcorn. And then we actually did a box of like the movie theater popcorn too. And that was very, very popular for us. So I posted in the chat that 
the teenthinktank.net website, we do have a section in there that is for interactive movies. We need to update it though, because so many of us are doing so many of them now. So I will make sure that I send that to Steve uh, so that he can get it up on the, on the site. And um, once all of our recordings are ready to roll, um, I will be emailing everyone out and letting you know that they are available um, on our YouTube page that is connected to the Teen Think Tank dot, um, um, net site. So hopefully that's helpful to everyone. Um, let's see. Oh, I see Erica shared uh, our, our collaborative document. Erica's one of my assistants and she went ahead and, and put it in the chat. We have a, a collaborative document that lists all of our interactive movies. So you can grab it from there too. Okay. What else are we doing with Take and Makes? Anybody else doing anything exciting? Any have anybody have any major, major fails and don't do it? I know you don't want to admit that you had a fail. We probably all did. <laughs> The only like kind of failure thing that I, it wasn't actually a fail. It's just that it was more work than I intended it to be um, for like myself. <laughs> I just, it was something that inquired, required a lot of little pieces. I was like, why did I do this by the end of it? Um, it was popular. So it was like a very popular kit and that's awesome. I'm just like, I'm putting individual googly eyes into baggies. Yeah. Yeah, for the the pom pom, the, the, the Pi Day pom pom coaster, I had to cut on a hundred pom poms to get. <laughs> and he liked the stick, the the tiny little yeah, one. So I'm sick of it. I'm really intrigued by this graham cracker leprechaun house kit that Amanda did. <laughs> it sounds adorable. <laughs> I don't think we've really had any fails in particular that I can think of. Everything's gone over pretty well and people are astonished by what the what we've been doing and, and things. so that's good. I think with the way this year has been, if you can entertain one teenager, you've succeeded. <laughs> Agreed. Valerie, did you talk about our boba kits that we did this month? I did not. You may do so. Oh, okay. So this month, make and take craft that we have for our team is fruity boba tea kits. So what I did was I went on Amazon and I ordered a three pack of tubs full of the bursting boba. I did not go for tapioca because tapioca is gross in my opinion. And I wasn't sure how well that would go over with our teens. So I chose the fruity bursting boba. We had strawberry, mango, and passion fruit. And then we bought a couple of boxes of like miscellaneous fruity tea bags. And then we also got some of the big boba straws and packaged them up. And each teen got to pick what flavor they wanted of the boba. And then the tea was kind of a mystery. And then um, over our Zoom meeting, they made it with us and drank it. And it went over really well. It's only the fifth and we're like almost out of kits that I've already made up. But I do still have like 10 more little condiment cups full of FOBA. So I can still make more. Yeah, we found some of the teens didn't like it very well, the tea itself. <laughs> And others, like my niece, I was surprised that she liked it because she's very picky, so. One of mine that went fast, and now that we're getting a little bit out of winter, it's, but um, in December, I did a hot, make your own hot chocolate bar at home. It included 
a pack of um, hot chocolate hot and chocolate. Like, like little individual bags of mini marshmallows, um, a candy cane they could crush up, like mini chocolate chips, like the little Heath crumbles you get in the bakery sec or the the baking section at the grocery store. The grocery so they could like zhuzh up their hot chocolate. On a related note, um, don't some places sell uh, like tea blending kits or loose leaf like components so you can make your own tea? That might be fun. Um, I will say that I will say that uh, I I've been drinking a lot of tea I've of late since I can't have coffee anymore. Uh, loose leaf tea, depending on what it is, not necessarily cheap. You you're gonna have to try to get it in bulk. From like Amazon or someplace like that, you get to someplace like churches, fine teas, it's going to be expensive. So just oh, gotcha. do your homework. Uh, and also, for example, um, I can't have anything with chicory in it, and I can't have anything with stevia or yeah. urethal, all that all stuff that in it. So go for an unsweetened tea so that if your kids, you know, try to avoid any allergies if possible. Just, just throwing that out there. Thanks, I really appreciate that. I'm not much of a tea drinker, so that is helpful to know. Well, I don't know if you guys saw the little blop that popped up a few seconds ago. We have five minutes until we are gonna get kicked out of this room and put back into the main room. They're gonna, we'll get another warning letting us know. So if there's some more things that you guys wanna bring up, be a great time. Uh, again, I'm going to emphasize that you guys send me all of your stuff, all your ideas, everything you've been doing all these many, many months, and we'll share them on the on the Teen Think Tank site. So I know I said that like 25 times, but I figured I would say it one more time. <laughs> Do you want instructions, list the whole nine yards, or how you do you want it? Maybe, I don't know, I know that could get to be a lot if you gave us everything. Maybe you could do like, say what it is and give a little a little description of what it is. And then when we load it on the site, what we can do is we can include who put it up there and they can email you for the more information. Sounds good. Um, and one other quick question, because there's some really good information in the chat. Will the chat show up in the recordings for like this and the other meeting rooms so we can scroll I believe that? so. I believe so. Um, when we get back in the main room, we can double check with Caitlin um, since she's the mastermind between for Zoom for us today. So, but that's a good question too. I know that it can be done because I know Janet does it with the, um, we have a youth services meetup every Tuesday and she sends out that all the time, the transcript. Let's see. Polymer clay. Did we talk about polymer clay? No, we have not really talked about polymer clay. Um, we're actually doing a polymer clay take and make this month. We're doing, uh, for pie day, we're doing the little pies. So little polymer clay pies. Um, so they just need uh, like a brown color, a little uh, bottle cap and like uh, some for berries and then a little cup of like the translucent polymer clay. Um, so we're making it into like a jewelry sort of thing. So we drilled a hole through the little bottle cap and then slid one of those things you can connect to like a charm or something like that. So that's what we're doing for this month with polymer clay. I did a taco picture frame or picture holder that went over like it was amazing. It was probably my most successful make and take. Um, the tacos were really cute. And I mean, who doesn't love tacos? So the minute they saw it, the, those kits were gone. So I recommend um, that book that I put in the chat. There's all sorts of great ideas. We did a narwhal as well. And the kids have just loved it. And polymer clay is super cheap. You can get like a bunch of mixed colors on Amazon. So it's, you get a lot of, get a lot of grams out of the one um, purchase. We have one minute. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you all. This has been great. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm so many, so many ideas. I'm super excited.
So that's why I love Team Think Tank. You can get a whole year's worth of ideas. Well, on, on, we are thinking a lot about when we are able to be back in person again, that still include a virtual part of it so that those of you who can't be there can still be there in a way. This is one thing that we've learned from this process. So, and sorry, we weren't able to have one in the fall. <laughs> None of us were quite up to it. I'm just grateful that we did it virtual because driving say from Cincinnati to Piqua, <laughs> yeah. you know, four in it's the morning and then nine at night. I was worth it, but boy, was I tired. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all back in the main room. <laughs>